Hey, thanks for watching. Once again, we've got Ty Branneman down teaching at the Lake Technical College Apprenticeship Program, and he actually pulls apart a toaster and shows us how we can learn everything we need to know about electric heat strips on a straight cool or heat pump system by using a toaster. Once again, please subscribe to Ty's channel. The link is down in the description. He has some really great applicable videos teaching the basics of HVACR. So here we go, Ty Branneman talking about electric heat using a toaster. Do we have any other kind of components that we use, sorry, let me sit by here, that uh, convert electrical energy into heat energy? What do we have right here? Does anybody know what this is? A toaster. It's a toaster, but really it's simply just a heat conversion or energy conversion device. It converts electrical energy watts and the heat energy BTUs. All right, so we can check the same thing again and let's see what our energy use is gonna be. You guys ready? I'm gonna turn this one on because it's, it's not OSHA approved. <laughs> All right, so let me, uh, let me do the controls on this one. All right, so if we check, oh, I'm on amps. Our amps over here is 7.5 amps, and we'll check our voltage. How many volts we got? 115 volts. How many watts does that come out to? 862.5 862.5 watts of electrical power this is nothing more than an energy conversion device but here's what's really cool about this toaster there's a lot of hvac parts let's unplug it so i can explain it all right so here we have our contactor when we press this lever down on this side it moves a lever on the other side and this lever moves these little plastic terminals so when i push this down notice how this plastic terminal is going to be moving See how it pushed this down? And these terminals now close, they touch. There's two different terminals. What would you call that? A switch. A sw it is a switch, 100% a switch. What else? Your, your contactor. What? Your contactor. A contactor, yes, a contactor. It made contact, it's essentially a contactor. It didn't have electromagnet coil on it, but it's still a contactor. That's your switch. It breaks both lines, line one and neutral, or line two, depending on how you wanna word it, right? Does that make sense? So now we've connected our electrical power into our resistive heat elements. But here's what else is cool. We have another HVAC component. You ever stand the top of this, the toaster, it says one slice. If you're only gonna put one slice in, it says specifically put it on this one side. In this case, it's gonna be on this side. If we look inside of here, you see that metal strip at the bottom, down that one side towards the bottom? There's a metal strip. My finger's pointing towards it, you see it? None of the other lines have it, but that one, right, it's on the opposite side of my finger. You see it? Yeah. You see it? Mm -hmm. Bimetal. You see that? It is a bimetal, yes. It's not a high metal, it's a bimetal. And that bimetal is made of two different electrical components, two different components, two different metals. And when they heat it up, it's going to cause it to warp. Right? It's going to warp. Do we use bimetals in anything HVAC? Yes. Give me an example. The something disc something. Snap, disc. Got. snap, snap disc. disc, yes, the snap disc. That is a bimetal. Also, the older thermostats had bimetal inside that would move with temperature. Uh, the older gas furnaces had bimetal. Our roll-out switches used bimetal. Lots of things used bimetal. And right here inside of here, we have a little piece of bimetal. And at the very, very bottom, there's a little rod. And I'm touching that rod right now. Yes, there's that rod. See that rod right in the very bottom of wiggling it? That bimetal is connected to that rod right there. This is beautiful. This is, this is so cool. So on this side, we have this little dial right here. And it's for lighter or darker toast. What it's doing is changing the distance between that rod and this piece of metal right here. If I put it over here, the, this piece of metal is very far from the rod. If I move it over here close, that piece of metal is very close to that rod. So if I move it close, this heats up just a little bit, a little bit of movement causes that rod to touch here. If I move it very far away, the bimetal has to warp a whole lot before it touches this piece of metal here. Definitely just warp something. That's but awesome. What, yeah. But what does that metal go to? It's essentially a timer based on temperature. Yes, yeah. exactly right. But if there was never any heat, would there ever be the, would the timer ever work? No, you mm -hmm. sit there all day long. So what happens is when it warps enough, it touches this piece of metal. What is this piece of metal connected to? A coil. A coil, also known as? Electromagnet. Electromagnet. It's an electromagnet. So when it warps enough, it touches this electromagnet. Guess what this electromagnet pulls in right here? This little piece of metal. 
Do the, do the honors. Grab that little piece of metal with your finger and just pull it back. Oh! <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It's HVAC. There's so much HVAC components in this little piece of equipment. So we pull this down. It closes our contacts. We have energy, a full circuit, a resistive heat element, so it's getting hot. Our biometal starts to warp. When our biometal warps enough, it energizes the electromagnet. The electromagnet pulls a switch, and it disengages the circuit. The spring pushes it back up. It's an HVAC component right here. Pretty cool, right? It is. Now it's converting electrical energy watts into heat energy BTUs. So how do you convert the, the energy to heat? So With a resistive element, nichrome. This one's nichrome. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. That's probably just a deal. It's, it's, uh, it's, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's inside. But nichrome is typically what we use in, in residential AC. Nichrome resistive wire. So as electricity flows through that nichrome, it starts getting hot. Yeah, I wonder why you don't get electrocuted while you touch it. It gets hot. You, 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 so it's you only on this you. path. So this yeah. material here is actually coated in a non-conductive uh, material. So it's this metal is not touching the ground. If it was touching ground, it would be grounded. Right. Anywhere this metal, the heating element, anywhere is touching metal, it would be grounded. This is one thing we look for for a compressor or an electrical heat element. So we look to see if it's grounded. I had a customer talking about that. I had a customer complaining in the summertime her electric bill is skyrocket high. She had several people come out to her house. Hey, we've checked it. The AC is running great. The AC is running great. She said, Ty, I've called you. Everybody said you're expensive, but they said that you could solve it if nobody else could. So I go out to her house. I check AC, and the AC was working fantastic. It's working great. So I said, okay, let's check the heat. So while the AC is running, I start checking the main power coming in. And one leg, I'm getting a constant nonstop 15 amps. Wow. Mm, what do you think? Mm. Heat's running. Heat's running. That's exactly right. What happened was it was a two-story house. Upstairs, somebody had dropped a quarter into the ductwork. The quarter rolled around the ductwork and dropped into the furnace. And where you have your electrical heating elements, it was touching one of the heating elements and the metal. And it welded itself in there. So electricity was flowing through the heat elements, through the quarter to the ground, and it was energizing the majority of that heat element. It wasn't enough amps to trip the breaker. It just running the heat elements. So she had great dehumidification, but the problem was she was running the heater while she was running the AC and her electric bill was high and she had to run the AC even more to keep up with it. Wow. So sometimes you gotta think outside the box, right? So uh, I checked the amps. I saw, hey, they, I shouldn't have amperage more. I know that my blower is only pulling about four amps and I'm getting 15, so something else is running. Check the amps on one side of the heater. I had 15 amps. Check the other side, it was zero. So next thing I do, shut the power off, pull the heater out, there was a quarter. Sometimes a nickel will roll in there. You gotta be careful, if you lose your nickel, you can't get your nickel back. Tons of electrical energy. Now let's think a little bit farther. What would happen if I put a fan, I've left the toaster together, and I was to take that little tray, and I was to put a fan on the back side of this. What would happen? You have you one have of these. a hair dryer? <laughs> yes, I would have one of these. This is nothing more than resistive heat elements with a fan behind it, right? It's a small fan, it's just getting started, but it still has a fan behind it. So you move air across the heating element and you have a heater. If I put a small fan behind my toaster, would I have a heat element? Yes. Yes. What's interesting about this, would it have a safety built in? If it got too hot, was there anything to save it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. The bimetal, yes, yeah. that bimetal would work as a limit switch. If it got too hot, it would close the temperature, it would hit this, it would pull the top up and the unit would shut off. So much goes into this. This actually converts to electric heat. Does anybody know how many watts there is? How many BTUs we get out of a watt? 700 and... That's for a motor. That's oh. good. I love that you knew that number. That's good. Yeah. I'm impressed. 3.413. Okay. Repeat the question. Give me answer. How many beats? <laughs> how many beats do I get out of one watt? Make sure the microphone's over there. Okay, and I also want the answer because I forgot it. <laughs> how many beats do I get out of one watt of power? Three hundred. Um, no. Three point four one three. Oh. Three point four. So I get a decent amount of beats out of one watt of power. Now, how many watts of this toaster use? Anybody remember? Just approximately. It's 900. okay. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. So times three point four one three. About three. Close enough. I, I'm. I don't use my math. You guys <laughs> use your math, right? 3,000? You good at math? You guys want to trust them? <laughs> or should we use our calculator? Calculator. Calculator. How many watts did we use? 900. 
So that's, let's do that. I'll use my calculator. You guys aren't going to pull yours out. We'll use mine. All right, so we had 900 watts of power times 3.413 BTUs equals 3,000 BTUs of heat energy. So do you know how we size a heater for a house? Anybody know? Manual J, heat load calculation. Or you can use WriteSoft, or you can use CoolCalc, just heat load calculations. There's one for summer heat loss, and there's one for uh, winter's heat loss and summer's heat gain. So you can actually do a heat load calculus, how many B2s you need. You can literally calculate how many of these toasters you would need to heat each individual room. Now, would it be more expensive to heat uh, with these toasters or with a full-size heater? AC, one of these electric heaters. Be more expensive with the toasters. Yes. More expensive with the toasters? Yes, definitely. Toasters? No, I don't. Well, yeah. More expensive with the toasters. Hey, what do you think? Because you got to have a fan and everything else. Well, we, we're, we're going to add a fan to it. Yeah, but you're going to need too many. And separate. Well, question, which one's more expensive? The toasters. Everybody agree? Oh, that's a hard one because you factor in the cost of the toaster and the cost of the unit. So we're separating it. I love that though. I love that he's thinking about the cost of the unit. That's cool. Wait. Separating that just simply to actually use the heat. We have two identical houses. This one didn't care about looks. They had little fans with little toasters all over the house. And this one had one unit centrally with ductwork to the house. Same exact um, wattage. Well, you would have heat loss so you in your ductwork. Oh, that's oh, I like that. <laughs> okay. I have a feeling they would cost the same. It would just take a lot longer to do it with the toaster than it would. They would cost yeah, the they same. The, yeah, wattage is wattage. If I need a thousand of. watts, whether it's a thousand watts here or it's a thousand watts there, the same it's the same wattage times 3.4 and 3. It's the same BTUs. Now, Bert was really cool because he was thinking outside the box. What about duck loss, right? So your, your heat goes through the duct work. You would have duck loss. Can't and obviously... <laughs> Obviously, you wouldn't want to put little heaters all over the house because, you know, kids and uh, forks and moisture. It would be a huge safety issue. But what I wanted you thinking about was thinking about electricity, thinking about heat conversion, thinking about the science behind electric heaters. So I had an electric heater from 1973, an electric heater from today, straight electric. The heaters themselves are the same. They're 100% efficiency. Every watt of power is 3.4 and 3 BTUs of heat. Well, there is... 100 years ago or today. Now, what's different about a, a unit that's from a straight electric heat unit from, the, say, the 70s to today? Safer. Safer, sure, yes, 100%. <laughs> On the electric heat side, mm. it's the same. What else, though? I love your thinking. Keep thinking. Keep thinking. I love your thinking about it. Come on, give me something. Give me something. The difference. Between Let's think about from... how we moved air. How do we get the air to move across those heat elements? The fan, right? Fan. Do they motors. Not? Motors have become way more yeah. energy efficient. So in the old days, we used to talk, well, those old AC units lasted forever. Well, they had these big old thick blower fans. And you picked that blower motor. It was like, oh, I better bend with my knees, these huge heavy fans. People are like, oh, I love those fans. They lasted forever but they weren't very energy efficient because it took a ton of more power to keep that fan turning when they started up. The fans today are a lot thinner, but they're also lighter and easier to move. The fan blades today, we use these aluminum fan blades because they turn a little easier, right? And also the motors themselves. We learned how to make motors more energy efficient. So what makes uh, electric heat only more efficient today is the fan, how we're moving the air. All right, thanks again to Ty. Please go down and click the link in the description and subscribe to his channel. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to hvacrschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.